All right, so let me give you where we're at, and it's simple. We got upended. We only got to enjoy one day after that Lions win. And then after week one and watching and so many teams, including my own, weren't ready to play, didn't look good, didn't look put together. The Lions victory looked even more impressive to me. I only asked the question, is it an overreaction by me to say that the Lions are absolutely Super Bowl contenders in the NFC? Meaning, I do not make them the favorite. I'm not sitting here telling you it's happening. Like, I'm telling you you're beating Seattle Sunday. That I'm telling you. I'm saying I think you are one of the three best teams in the NFC, and I think you have a tremendous upside. I believe that. I've believed it all summer. They validated my belief in them by going to Kansas City and doing it. Is that an overreaction? You are not a villain if you say it is. I don't think it makes you a bad person. You guys are going crazy with Rico. Here's the deal. This isn't North Korea. You're not thrown in a labor camp if you don't believe the team's not one of the three best. But what I need are credible reasons why. So very simple. We're having a good time with it. I mean, my team lost 40 to nothing. The Lions are my only. Think about these words leaving my mouth. Don't the Lions that. are my only joy in football right now. I thought you could say they're your only hope. No, the, the Lions are my only hope for football glory this fall. On Saturday or Sunday. Think about those you don't words. You the Giants can bounce back. No, no. I told you they were going to regress this year. That's, well, yeah. Do, 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 do. Hey, up David, next. I, you know what? I, I got, I, I was going to try to say. I, don't. Up next, here's little Mikey excited to kick a field goal on the opening drive of the season. Cut scene. Oh, my God. It's going the other way for seven. <laughs> Deep down, did you want the Jets to be just as bad as you? Yes. Just not last night because I had them plus two and a half. Oh, okay. I didn't. I mean, I like like last night. I thought maybe you know what? If, if we I didn't, didn't bet score, the game, if I, I didn't don't bet want you the to game, score. oh, I would have. I would have just said, you know what? Hammer Robbie's code. Forty to nothing equals blown Achilles. Wow. Eye for eye, okay. tooth for tooth. Okay. Achilles for Achilles. But not last night. Plus two and a half, J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Um, let's go to the people because a lot of people want to talk. Let's get to it. D is up next, 97-1. What's up, D? D. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, D. Go. What's up? Hey, I just want to say I do agree with Rico. I think we're at uh, number three right now in the NFC. I mean, the 49ers are the 49ers. They're scary. They're scary. But uh, Cowboys, we can't deny 40-0 until our offense – comes back to last season's offense, which we all hope is at Seattle, like with Seattle on Sunday, but we can't deny. I think we're at three right now. Another thing I'd like to say is uh, with our ticket prices going up, we've all seen after we beat the Chiefs, I think we're going to be able to defend the Den at home better with away teams not traveling as well other than their diehards. D, I'm going to tell so you I something. Think- this might be an overreaction on my part. Maybe I'll look stupid. No big deal. I think you have a shot to have the greatest home field advantage in the entire league this year because of what you just said. There is no fan base in football that wants it more. There is no fan base that has died to have these games more. And the fact that you won't have opposing fan bases invading – In an indoor stadium, I'm telling you, D, I think there's a lot of teams that are going to come here and they're going to walk out of here without hair on their head. And and to add to that, D, uh, according to Lions defensive back C.J. Gardner-Johnson, he wants to see blue ski masks everywhere for the home opener. (laughs) We're the villains, right? It's part of us. It's the culture. I'm changing that. That's according to him. Yeah. No, D, I'm with you. Like, I think if a team yeah, comes but, here and wins, it's going to be a tall task because you guys are going to make it impossible for teams to come here. Yeah, the culture's changing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Now handle your business now. Don't go out there on Barry Sanders' statue day and show your ass. Let's get this done. <laughs> Don't be goofy about this We're now. We're doing the blue uh, ski mask now. I wonder how many. You know what? There's going to be a lot of them there. I wonder if Kirk Cousins will be there. No, that's no shirt, gold chains. No, I was talking about Rayther. Oh, 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 Remember oh, that? Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, Kirk Cousins had a ski mask on. I've never begged and pleaded for somebody to change their story so much over the phone. Like, I promise you. 
If anyone wasn't there, it would be <laughs> Apostle Paul, a.k.a. Kirk Cousins. He was leading a Bible study. I'm telling you, please retract that article. And on the fourth day, I washed Jesus' feet. All right, let's go to Mike, 97.1. Mike, how are you? Good, guys. How's it going? Excellent. Good. So I think right now we're a top five team in the NFC. Uh, I think five. San Fran, top five, because I think San Fran, Philly, um, are the clear cut two, mm-hmm. and then I think I think that you can't ignore Dallas. Sorry, Mike, you you can't. Oh, I'm not. I just you, we know what I happens. I know you want to, to but yeah, oh, I, I hate their. It guts. Doesn't matter how bad the G men might be this year. I know. Um, and then I think you're in the mix, and I'm still burnt from last year because of the Seattle game. Um, I think they're fraudulent this year though, but I I think they have the potential to move up to two because I think. Philly's going to come back down to earth a little bit this year. Me too. Well, here's the thing about that, Mike. Normally, when you lose a Super Bowl, it's like a, I don't know if it's a jinx or something, but you're never the same. You just, and that could be Philly, but I just look at Jalen Hurts and I, I just like watching the play and I like the Philly defense. Yeah, but I think Philly's defense lost the heart in CJ. CJ had that swag that that team kind of carried. And I don't know that their defense can carry that over to this year. Yeah, but they still um, got Slay there, and he 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 could talk enough trash for. If you're gonna knock right. Philly, here's the way to do it: two new coordinators. I think you take a downgrade at DC, and they have a lot of youth on D. Now, can it work? Yes, but I just have a hard time that you're gonna replace five six starters. It's all kids. Yeah, Mike, I think they're gettable. I think San Francisco's got the best infrastructure, but I, I this is where Rico and I are going to battle till the end. I think Brock Purdy's a joke. Yeah, the one thing that I think, too, that <laughs> I know, hate the, Lions most, the Lions most likely are going to add at the deadline. I hope it is Aaron Donald. I think that's the pipe dream. But what about DeForest Buckner from Indy? Here's what you I want to do, Mike. Until we get you know within a week of the trade deadline. I don't even want to talk really names. Let's just talk about, hey, if we do our job over the next month, we're in a position to add dot, dot, dot. I don't know who's available. Because if if they get that certain defensive player from L.A. No, no, okay. I I didn't say a name. Dad, get Miles Garrett. Can we stop? Now you're being mean. You're being mean. You're being mean. That would be a game. I'll take back the Kirk Cousins Bible study thing. You take back that remark. But yeah, that is, uh, yeah. They they if they go and address the defensive line and add a a high caliber player in a trade, then that's it. Because I like every level of the defense so far. You get that player or a player similar to that. By and the you know way, what? we're bringing it back. Has anyone noticed? Uh, two callers in a row have agreed with Rico Beer. Are, are, are you feeling like your people are now supporting you? Are you back? Yeah, I'm feeling like, you know what? Uh, I'm down off of the uh, pinata string. <laughs> You're back like Texas. Juan, 97.1. What's up, Juan? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's Hello? picking up the phone. I hear, He's picking up the Juan, phone. Juan, I heard you Hello? run into the phone. Right, we got right, you. Yeah, he was, we were on speaker. He What's up, buddy? All right, Juan, you Juan. killed me. Now you're gone. Juan, I believed in you. I was rooting for you. Go to DJ, 97. Juan. What's up, DJ? What up, though, my dog? How yeah, are right. you, what DJ? Up, DJ? Excellent. Man, 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 I'm good. <laughs> man, I'm great, man. I've been uh, I've been calling ever since I got back um, from the actual game. Dude, I've never heard nothing that loud in my life, which is the first time in my life I think the Lions really are a contender. The national media has been killing me. Like, we wasn't dropping balls. Like, we wasn't fumbling right at the 15-yard line. And to still not play our best game, guys, because I don't know how many of you guys have been to Arrowhead. I've never seen that like it in my life. Like, you could even hear yourself talk to the person right next to you. Mm-hmm. So that's why our offensive line was looking so bad and because they couldn't communicate because it was that much of an insane environment. That's number one. So I'm with you, Mike. They are, without a doubt, a contender. I'm right there with you. But, Rico, I want to throw you a bone. I'm with you, too, as far as I think Jared Goff, as long as the line protects him, he can be okay. It's when we get into them situations that we need him to be better than okay or make that extra play that worries me because at that game, guys, 
we had a touchdown. I don't know if y'all seen it. Amon St. Brown was wide open up the scene on that fourth and two. But golf was so erratic. <laughs> DJ, he how about this? And David, I know, I know exactly where he's going. Or you just run, you pick up the two yards, and you live to go. Now, now the game's pretty much over. But even if he, the pass that he threw, DJ, was going to be behind the receiver. So that's what I mean. In those golf regular season, I, he's, he's improving. He's got a lot of pieces around him. It's just that pressure moment. Can he deliver and get them to that next level? You know, you know what's bad about this, though, guys? It's bad because the thing that he is is he's consistent, he's accurate. It's what Stafford wasn't for the most part. But then Stafford was the dude at the end when it was money time, he was going to make the big throw. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah. kind of a conundrum. Like, like, we kind of stuck with that. And lastly, I've been meaning to mention this to y'all, and I'm, I'm going to let y'all go. Mike, you know I always enjoy talking to you, my dog. We're Kansas good. City fans. Kansas City fans did something that I thought was awesome. What? I mentioned it to on Fridays, the day before the game, the entire city reds out. Or, like, the Wednesday when I got there, the whole city, every office building wore red. I think our Lions should do that. Every Friday, we should hallelujah blew it out from here on out. Because I, I really, that's how confident I am in our. We just hallelujah blew Friday. I mean. Whether it's a sweatshirt, T-shirt, whatever. I mean, what don't they turn the Renaissance blue? They do, don't they? See, I'm in a good mood. I was going to make a joke. Not even going to do it. What? Two four sounds blue. No, 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 no. Oh, two four eight five three uh, you know nine. What? Yep, yep. Ninety seven, ninety seven. It's sunny <laughs> out. This there team's two and zero. Oh. Here's Rico for timeshare properties. <laughs>